Okay. Good evening and welcome to the February 12, 2018 meeting of the Cape Elizabeth Town Council. Uh, could we have the roll call? Chairman Sullivan? Here. Councilor Garvin? Here. Councilor Caitlin Jordan? Here. Councilor Penelope Jordan? Here. Councilor Lennon? Here. Councilor Randall? Here. And Councilor Straw? Here. Uh, thank you, and shall we now pledge our allegiance to the flag? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> Are there any reports and correspondence from town councilors that they would like to share? Councilor Penny Jordan? Um, I'd just like to, once again, um, remind people about the comprehensive plan and all of the work that's going on at this point in time. Um, Loomis has, uh, is where we go and can gather your input on answers to questions. We've received some great input to all the questions, so everybody please uh, get connected and uh, um, engage in the conversation on Loomis. We had our public forum, which um, I regret that I had the flu, but uh, it was very successful and um, uh, well attended and we're having our community meeting so if uh, you are involved in a community group and you would like to have a presentation by the uh, comprehensive plan uh, committee member just let Maureen uh, O'Mara know. Thank you. Anyone else? Councilor Straw? The uh, MMA Legislative Policy Committee met on January 18th. Uh, it's anticipated to be the only meeting that uh, we have this year because of what's on the agenda with the legislature. Uh, the items that were on the agenda for discussion were relatively non-controversial. The two that seemed to garner the most uh, discussion were whether alcohol should be allowed to be served uh, on patios that aren't directly adjacent to liquors, uh, to restaurants, which currently it sounds like they're not. Uh, and another one that uh, came up was, um, uh, actually two that come up that might be of interest. One is whether to allow remote uh, participation in uh, public boards and meetings like a town council. Uh, there's a bill relating to that working its way through the legislature. Thank you. Anyone else? I have several items. Um, I received a, a letter in the mail from Mr. Edward Little in York Harbor with questions about how taxes are assessed in certain parts of town. I referred him to the tax assessor and the manager and I'm going to hand this letter over to the town clerk for records. Uh, I also received a letter from the Vice President of the United States. Uh, Michael Pence, uh, and I would like to read that. Write, read this. He's congratulating the town on its Olympian Claire Egan. Oh, cool. Dear Ms. Sullivan, as leader of the United States delegation to the 2018 Olympic Winter Games, I am proud to join the people of Cape Elizabeth in honoring your community's own Claire Egan as a member of the U.S. Olympic team in, I think it's pronounced Pyeongchang, South Korea. Together, the members of our Olympic team represent the strength of our nation and the destiny of American greatness at home and around the world. I join Americans everywhere in applauding these athletes and cheering them on as they reach for their dreams. On behalf of the American people, I want you to know how proud we are of your community for representing America on the world stage. Please know that I'll be rooting for Claire and rallying behind Team USA as they compete in the 23rd <laughs> I'm not up on my Roman numbers. <laughs> 23rd Olympic Winter Games in Pyeongchang. May God bless the people of Cape Elizabeth. May God bless our 2018 Olympic team. And may God bless the United States of America. Sincerely, Michael R. Pence, Vice President of the United States. And um, I believe Claire is racing this Wednesday in a 15 kilometer individual event. So we certainly send her our best wishes as well. So I'm gonna hand this over to the town clerk for the records. And uh, <clears throat> we uh, uh, met, uh, the town uh, manager and a finance chair and I met with uh, Runyon Kirsten, Kirstina Ouellette to get more information about our audit and we'll be having a joint board meeting with the school board uh, on March 14th, I believe, to receive more information about that. 
And um, also, some of us were able to uh, meet the school board. We were invited to tour three, the three schools here and then attend a presentation, which is their preliminary presentation from engineers on a uh, potential $27 uh, million dollar, uh, renovation and addition project that the school board is looking into. And so we appreciate them inviting that to take, we're inviting the town council to take a look at that. So with that, I'll move on. Um, could we please have the finance committee report? Thank you, Council Sullivan. Um, I'll draw everybody's attention to the dashboard and um, it is included in the packet. Um, nothing substantially different from a month over month perspective. Um, the uh, uh, only sort of material things I wanted to uh, ask Matt about um, were the uh, debt service line and where we're tracking on that. Uh, as I know that there's, um, you've, you've highlighted a few items relative to debt status, so I just wanted to know if you could go into that in a little bit and uh, anything else that is of particular note for this month. Sure. Uh, a couple of quick things that we have on there. Our debt status, we, it, this does track our payments that we do, uh, that we have made throughout the course of the year. So we are tracking online with where we need to be uh, budgetarily. Uh, so that's, uh, lack of a better term, that's a good thing. Yep. Uh, we are paying our bills and, and so that's, but that does track along the lines of the, where we should be on the calendar. A couple of good highlights that I will say are uh, on our revenue side, we are still doing fairly well on excise taxes. We are tracking uh, roughly $48,000 higher than we were at this time last year, as well as our building permits are, are, are a pleasant surprise. Uh, we, will hit, we will hit our target on that. There is still robust building activity taking place within the town. so. Uh, that's why that number is still tracking. I thought last year was a banner year, uh, but we still seem to be doing fairly well with the with that with that revenue line. On, on the expenditure side, uh, our salt budget you'll notice has taken a jump, and that is, uh, with all due due respect, gratitude to old man Winter, uh, with the with the icy conditions that we've had, uh, that has hit us pretty hard in the past the past four weeks. Uh, so you've seen a change in there. Uh, that's juxtaposed to some uh, knock on wood positive, uh, positive output on the police overtime line. So uh, we, we are back at full strength at the police department, which is a good thing, and that should help us out uh, as we see the year go go forward. So, uh, but there's there's some good results taking place on our on our financial dashboard. Uh, one other item, if I could, uh, Councilor Garvin, to touch on. You'll notice a little bit of a change this this month on uh, on the council packet. Uh, attachments that we had. Uh, you'll notice we had uh, revenue expense, uh, all those broken out basically into four different reports. Uh, this is somewhat in response to Councilor Straw's request for us to provide these as a, as a PDF uh, or strictly printed as a PDF, so it's a much cleaner copy. But uh, instead of in the past, what we would have done would, would have been to scan all of those pages and turn it into one document that you can't zoom in and out of as easily. So now we those are each of the four individual reports that are generated that have generally just been in one. Uh, so you've got an appropriation control report, your revenue control report, trial balances, all those reports are right there. So hopefully that you'll find that useful uh, or any easier to use going forward. All right, thank you. Are there I any did, questions for, oh, I'm sorry. I did have a couple other things too. Oh, okay. so, but go ahead with questions for Matt if anybody has them. Anyone have questions for uh, Matt? No. Um, so two other things. Um, last Tuesday, uh, at the invitation of the school board chair and finance chair for the school board, I attended their initial um, uh, uh, workshop that their finance committee uh, held um, as we prepare to uh, move into budget season. Um, it was uh, sort of an introductory overview of um, uh, some of the data that they have and, and will be working with relative to um, uh, enrollment projections, um, some of the um, uh, splits between fixed and um, non-fixed costs in their budgets and things like that. Um, so it was a good chance to just hear preliminarily, um, you know, some of the thinking that they have. Uh, and I know that um, in the coming weeks, we will all be participating in various, um, or have the opportunity at least to participate in various workshops. Uh, with them to get first-hand information as well. So I would strongly encourage uh, not only my fellow counselors, but others in the community um, to engage in this process. 
Um, it's uh, very productive, very informative. Uh, it's, uh, these meetings are all open to the public. Um, so um, as you've probably seen uh, in uh, news reports in the last uh, week or two, uh, the town will again be facing uh, a projected um, significant cut on the education side um, that will certainly be something that we as council and as community at large will um, you know, be needing to figure out how to grapple with. So uh, everybody's participation early and often uh, is highly encouraged on that. And then the last thing um, is the uh, town manager and I have been having um, a little bit of back and forth dialogue and uh, I think hopefully at either next month's meeting or the, or the, or the meeting following, um, I had requested um, some information to be pulled together, which he's asked um, the tax assessor, Clint Sweat, to provide for us about some potential um, opportunities and programs for targeted tax relief. Um, so as we think about um, some of the um, different demographics in town and <laughs> sometimes competing interests relative to um, you know, increasing costs of doing business throughout the community. Um, I'm interested, in, as some of our neighboring communities have uh, have implemented in their towns, opportunities to maybe provide some targeted tax relief to offset some of those rising costs that we face. So, uh, be looking for that next month uh, or the month after, uh, depending on how we're able to pull that together. Thank you, Jamie. That yep. sounds great. Anyone else? Okay, we've, we've now come to the uh, item on the agenda where a citizen uh, may approach the council, discuss something that is not on tonight's agenda. Is there anyone wishing to address the council on an item that, on something that is not on tonight's agenda? Well, thank you. Seeing no one, we'll move on. And now the town manager's monthly report, please. Thank, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, Couple of quick things I'd like to note. You'll notice that we do have our new microphones here this evening. I hope that uh, the audio is coming through at home uh, for those who couldn't make it out tonight, uh, that they're hearing us loud and clear. Uh, you'll also notice if you look to the back of the chambers, one of the reasons why we're not getting as much of the uh, problems we're having in prior months is hopefully uh, acoustic panels. And uh, they've been installed, they were installed uh, at the start of last week and I think uh, they did a great job as far as matching the color because I had to do a double take after they put them in there to realize that the extent to which we had put them in. So hopefully these audio upgrades will help us out as far as uh, making the, the sound more palatable when we do have a larger turnout in the in the room as well as the movable mics, which I will uh, uh, advise the council that they are very sensitive to picking up uh, <laughs> sidebar conversations. So just to be, be on your best. <laughs> uh, I'll get into my uh, town manager's report. Uh, oh, oh, sorry, one other item I had. Uh, the, uh, on the last month, we were looking at bringing forward some recommendations for the dog ordinance, or at least to refer that to the ordinance committee. But uh, looking at the extent of what we had on the agenda for this evening and trying to not be as aggressive as uh, we have been lately uh, with the agendas, we'll bring that forward to next, to next month. So please uh, be advised that that'll be uh, see, uh, coming attractions. So. Uh, I'd like to just state out that the town operations are in a very busy segment of the year. Public works crews, as we all know, have made great efforts since the storm season began and they've been stretched uh, extremely thin, uh, but I think they've been doing a heck of a job as far as taking care of our roads in comparison to the many that I do travel through. I, I would put our, our guys up against any and I'd put them right up at the top. Be advised that the second half property tax bills will be arriving in the mail this week. Uh, the second half payments will be due on April 2nd. Uh, so if you do receive that, uh, let correspondence from the town be advised that that's most likely the bill. If you had paid them uh, earlier at the end of last year, as many people did, you will find that there will be a zero balance if you do receive a bill and it will show that. So uh, if there are any questions relating to your bills, you can always refer to our tax office and they'll be happy to help. All of our departments are currently working on providing me with their different operating budgets for the upcoming fiscal 2019 budget. I'll be working on assembling the annual budget with a document to be delivered to the council by March 9th. Two facilitated workshops were held for the discussion of paper streets. Both sessions were well attended with productive discussions held, common interests identified, and discussion themes identified. Good group decisions who facilitated the workshops will have the report from the meetings sent to me prior to the March council meeting. So you should be receiving that as well. That was our, that was our stated goal and uh, 
we should anticipate seeing that. <clears throat> Chief Williams and I had the opportunity to meet with two different residents of the Lighthouse Point neighborhood to discuss the traffic conditions and other concerns within the neighborhood that had been identified through the, all the discussions over the past six months about paper streets. In our conversation, we identified some of the areas that we'll be working on to try to help them find some solutions to the challenges that are facing the neighborhood. So we have a strategy going forward and are looking forward to helping them solve that problem. Chairman Sullivan, Finance Chairman Garvin, and I met with our town auditors to have a continued discussion on the most recent audit results. One of the results from this meeting is to have a combined workshop with the auditors, and we're looking at that as Chairman Sullivan said, March 14th at 7 p.m. in the Jordan Conference Room. And finally, I'd like to wish on a good note, the Thomas Memorial Library, a happy second anniversary of their completion of their renovations and addition product, uh, project. They, uh, they had a great, great celebration on, on Saturday, and uh, it was very well attended, as well as an uh, outdoor camping, uh, camping display that was put on by Tony Owens and uh, another gentleman. So that is all I have to say. Uh, Madam Chairman, uh, respectfully submitted. Thank you very much. Thank you, Matt. <coughs> Uh, the next item is a review of the draft minutes of the January 8, 2018 Town Council meeting. Is there a motion to accept the draft minutes? I Dr. think page, page two is missing from what's online. Hmm, it is. Page two is missing. So maybe wait till next month. <laughs> Well, and mm. if what I would uh, entertain then is a motion to uh, revisit the January 8, 2018 minutes at the March 12, 2018 meeting. If so moved. Is there a second? Second. Councilor Randall, any more discussion? All those in favor? Thank you. We'll move on. And item number 35, consider the naming of a new private road, Grouse Run Drive. Is there anyone from the public who would like to speak to this item? Okay. And I think uh, I see Chief Williams uh, sitting in the audience, and I suspect he would like to speak to this. And we have a memo, and it's in the supporting documents from the Chief on uh, this uh, new street. Yes, good evening. Um, ooh, that is mm -hmm. um, I was contacted by Jay Cox of Sawyer Road uh, representing McKenzie Properties LLC concerning a new private drive. Jay advised that uh, he built a driveway to access uh, three building lots at 1189 Sawyer Road. Since two or more properties are served by this drive, the road needs to be named per chapter 22 addressing ordinance. We um, contacted Jay again and in the ordinance what we try to do is meet or, or have the owners of that particular property devise the name and we, Clint Sweat and myself, check the name just to make sure that it doesn't correspond or sound like another name in town. Therefore, um, they came up with the name Grouse Run Drive. That'll be all. Does anyone have questions for Chief Williams? Hmm? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Matt, would you like it's to a... say anything about this item, or? No, I think uh, you know, as as one of the former addressing officers, this was a fairly uh, you know straightforward straightforward request that uh, has been brought forward by by Mr. Cox. Uh, it's just uh, ready get ready for the council to go forward, and, and they can get busy with their construction season. Okay. Do I have a motion to approve a new private road name at one, uh, I'm sorry, at 1189 Sawyer Road as Grouse Run Drive? So moved. Okay, Councilor Randall, second. second that. Councilor Penny Jordan, is there any more discussion? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Right, thank you. Thank you, Chief Williams. Thank you. Next item, number 36, request for a zone change to business zone A at 560 Shore Road. Uh, Cape Elizabeth Service Center, located at 560 Shore Road, is requesting consideration of a zone change to allow used car dealer plates. Is anyone from the audience uh, <coughs> uh, wishing to address this item? 
Hmm. Okay, seeing no one. Uh, okay, I would ask the town manager to tell us a little bit, a little bit more about this this request. Sure, sure. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, the owners of Cape Elizabeth Service Center have uh, came forward to uh, with this request. They had, uh, for many years, uh, their experience has been that they would sell an occasional car off, you know, off the front of the lot. Uh, they would, you know, fix one up and, and sell it on occasion. But they are only limited to be able to sell five cars per year as you and I uh, would probably be as well uh, if we wanted to do that. It may actually be less on a residential, but no more than five. What they would like to do would, would make uh, their ability to sell more than that amount of cars within the year, and part of that request is to get dealer plates. But in order to get dealer plates, the town needs to be able to sign off on it, which would allow them, which would state basically that the use of selling used cars off from that property is an allowable use within the zone that it's that it's that it exists in. So what they're looking to do is have uh, the ability to get three used car dealer plates, and this would allow them to sell at a maximum of three cars at a time. Uh, they would sell them off from their off from their lot, and they would and their proposal, at least on this case, is to have. Uh, the standard for sale sign, eight, about an eight and a half by 11 letter size sign in, in the window, which would be similar to where they are now. Uh, but when the plates aren't being used or they didn't have a car for sale, then they would lock the car, the, the plates away. Uh, so what, ultimately what they're looking to do is uh, amend the business A zone, which is where that's located in, to provide the following adjustments that you had in the, in the packet this evening to allow them to, to make this use legal. And so that's why this request was brought forward this evening. They, uh, the, there is a procedure that has been put in place where uh, they can make this request, but it comes to the council first. And the council can decide if they're in favor of this as a general concept or if they feel, sorry, let me revise that. Uh, I didn't want to instill favor one way or the other. If the council felt that it should move forward to have a full public uh, exposure and discussion, so what you would do from this point if you felt that it merited going forward would be to refer this to the planning board for which then they can work on it and then they would have to hold public hearings and make that recommendation back to the council and then you'd go forward from, from that point in your normal process but uh, but at this point this is the starting they're in the starting blocks here as far as making their their request so but the, uh, but the council could decide it does not support this and then it would end here so if, there are there are Several scenarios for the council to discuss. Correct. Correct. Okay. And the uh, the most recent adjustment I think that was in the BA zone was back a number of years ago when Lee Wilson did the revision of the BA to allow uh, when the t when Tara was constructed the, mm -hmm. the you know the yellow the larger yellow office style building that's almost across the street from the uh, from the service station. So that was that was the most recent uh, adjustment that's taken place. But uh, that, but that's why this is here tonight. So it's for the council to consider. Thank you, Matt. Is You're there welcome. any? Uh, is there a motion or any discussion or? I have a question. Yes. Is there any particular relevance to the three that are being requested? That was just their request. They, they didn't really want to be, uh, you know, speak, speaking with the owner's representative, they didn't really want to become a, a used car lot. And they felt that three was, you know, if they could have the opportunity to sell three at a time or up to three at a time, then that would kind of meet where they're at. Their primary business is is this is repair as a repair garage but this is an adjunct to that so uh it it would be you know trying to help their business along but they didn't want to be a, a to, you know a total used car lot they, they're still their primary bread and butter is is on the service side of it Great. i've got a question with other than the uh, eight by eleven sign in each car would there be any other signage saying used cars for sale that's not what they're asking for. Yeah, I think they're just looking to, the only way they want to advertise it is via the, the eight and a half by 11 for sale sign in the window. Uh, Kayla? I, you would then just have to get into the sign ordinance itself. I mean, you wouldn't be able to limit their signs. And then I'd have to ask if we can limit in our ordinance that sign because of the whole redoing the signs. Can we even? put a limit on the 8 by 11 sign. I'm not sure you'd be able to. I'm not. 
I'm not, wow. I'm not well versed in the uh, in the sign ordinance related to for sale signs, so uh, that'd be a good question for for uh, Code Officer Ben McDougal. Are there any other thoughts, Councillor Starako? Oh, I'm just going to make a motion. Let's open this. Anybody else? Has No, go I move that we refer this matter to the planning board for their review and recommendation. Second. 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 Is there any further discussion? Councilor Starr? Uh, so, uh, the only comment I would make is so I live down the street uh, from <coughs> the dealer, and my one concern is that uh, with respect to the comments about the, 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 what does this open up with respect to what this turns into is are we, would this potentially create a backdoor used car lot? In, by making this change. Uh, I'm okay with sending it to the uh, subcommittee for review, but uh, I do have some hesitation. Mm -hmm. Councilor Joy? Well, I mean, I, essentially, Caitlin, it, Caitlin, I'm sorry. it is making, it's allowing them to sell used cars, you know, but I think when Matt says used car lot, they aren't gonna just be just a used car lot. The way it's worded is you still have to be a repair shop with a limit of three cars, so, if they decide to have a backdoor car lot, then I'd say you call up and call and tattle on them. <laughs> uh, Sarah. So, Caitlin, on the sign thing, are you suggesting that there's not a way for them to write into the revised ordinance that they will, in fact, only have three eight and a half by 11? Because that would it has to align with the current ordinance sign, and does that mean that the signs could be bigger and more? What, where are you going with that? I think they would be allowed to do whatever signs the sign ordinance allows. I don't, the whole point of us rewriting the sign ordinance was we can't make regulation on signs specific to content, and we right here are saying we're gonna regulate this content sign to an eight and a half by 11, which it's not gonna hold up. So. My question is, I, I, I would like to refer this to the planning board and let them wrestle with it a little bit. Can we, with that, give them the suggestion that part of it will be considering this sign possible conflict and that Ben seems like a good resource or if they're really, if they really can't wrestle with it, they can always send it to ordinance. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt had something you wanted to add. If I may, through the yeah. chair. Uh, the th Part of the language that they had brought forward was to restrict signage uh, to just that eight and a half by 11 in the car, kind of like on the dashboard type of signage on, or on the window, like you would on a regular way. But that does lend to the question of, do you start, are you starting to put a hook into the sign ordinance at that point in time? So that is a question that would have to be answered as far as you know, the, the, the multifaceted approach to what this recommendation may mean. Uh, or is that something that can be addressed via the ordinance language within within this district that you can do it, but you are limited to that amount? So that would be a question that would have to be answered under the under the review area. So uh, we'd have to have, have staff on a couple different areas weigh in, but uh, we could find an answer to it, but it's something that would take some, some time to get through. But right now they're just looking at limiting it strictly to that, those three signs within, if they had three cars or they had two cars, it'd be two signs. But to Sarah's point, which is uh, if we are proposing that we move this to uh, the planning board, they should be looking at they that should. signage at that point in time. So, yeah. okay. Yeah, Jamie? Um, two things. I think that the planning board's review kind of needs to precede any discussion of sign if they think that the, there's no uh, if their recommendation is that the zoning shouldn't be changed, then the sign thing becomes a moot point. To exactly. Um, exactly. So I think whether they're the deliberative body on the sign question or the ordinance committee or what have you, it's, it's sort of putting the cart before the horse in, in, in terms of having that discussion. I also wanted to make a comment in response to Chris um, in so much as that I agree with um, you in principle around the, your concern. What we're looking at here is technically an expansion of use and not the introduction of new use. The current law allows them to sell five vehicles. Their point is that it's just that that's just not enough. So, um, you know, while while I hear where you're going with that, I think that 
um, this is this is really just about whether or not we're e expanding that allowance versus what they're currently allowed. Uh, yeah. if, if I may, through the chair again, yeah. uh, just to, to a point of point of order on this, the five, selling the five cars in the year is is currently an illegal land use within the zoning district that it exists in. So. Uh, you know, it may be legal under state law, but it's not legal under current ordinance to allow uh, used car sales within that district. So are they currently doing it or not? They have historically been selling cars there uh, okay. off the lot. So uh, Can you explain the conflict? Well, <laughs> let's just state that the code officer did not know that used cars were being sold off the lot up until the point that uh, they came forward to ask if they could sell more. become legal. But what they and if I'm not explicitly taking them, their word is law here, but can you explain the conflict between the state law then and our ordinance? Uh, yeah, I spoke with uh, Ben McDougall today about this, and yeah, our, it's, selling of used cars is not an allowed use within in the BA zone. There are, you know, it's one of those things where if it's not identified as a use within the zone, it's not an allowed use. And so selling those cars as a used car, it's, it's currently in illegal use. So they were trying to get the legal in a couple different ways. I mean, they were, they were well within their rights within the state law as far as the selling of used cars. They were well outside of their rights to sell used cars within the zoning ordinance of the town of Cape Elizabeth. So now that Ben knows of it, uh, it, it from this point forward, or from when he became knowledgeable of it, it would become an, an illegal use. So that's, you know, it's, it's quite, a, quite frankly, it's opened a bit of a, at least a small corner of Pandora's box when it comes to it. Uh, Caitlin? Oh, I was just going to, I mean, couldn't you argue that a repair garage, I mean, most repair garages sell cars? with like the five in a year. I mean, so it's almost, I mean, you could certainly make the argument that it's an assumed use under the repair garage, allowed um, use. If I may. Uh, you, yeah, uh, yes. You may be able to make that assumption, but unless it's spelled out, unfortunately it doesn't complete that, complete that gap. Right. So Sorry. that's that's why we have, that's why that's, and you know, my hat's off to these folks for, for trying to come forward to you know to to correct a couple of different things. So, um, okay. I, my question is this: this whole conversation leads me to believe that this is primarily our first step, an ordinance conversation. Because what's the planning board supposed to be deciding on? I mean, now we're not just talking three signs; we're talking. This has been, I mean, should this be a non-conforming use? Are they talking about changing the ordinance? And that opens up, um, you know, a much bigger thing for the whole BA zone. In other words, why aren't we sending this to ordinance first so they can carve out appropriate language to meet the needs of this and then send it to the planning board to say, yes, no, maybe, and here's how it would look on the ground. It's just, it's just I feel like the planning board's going to get and be like, we don't write ordinances. Well, to me, there's also a central question of, is the council interested in pursuing a zoning change? Because if we're interested, we, this is why we would send it on to ordinance and planning. But there's the principal question of allowing used car sales in this, in this place. You know, and I think that, you know, that the council needs to be clear on, do you support this potential new activity Apparently it's been going on against town ordinance, but do you support this going forward? And, and I, I would like to see that discussion. No, Penny. I would say that um, as I read this, as I kind of thought about probably what precipitated it, um, we as a town need to support small businesses. This is something that allows this business to um, leverage the work that they do in another way, so diversify. Is it going to become a huge used car lot? If we craft this properly, that isn't what will occur, but I believe in demonstrating support for small businesses in town. Thank you. 
Um, I think Valerie was next. Um, I agree with you, Penny, um, or Councilor Jordan. Um, and I also think they've been doing this for some time now. I think it's appropriate to send it to the planning board because they will better be able to assess the situation, take the temperature of the neighbors, and then come back to us with more information so we can make a decision at that point. Okay, thank you. And Kaylin? I was going to kind of argue the opposite of what she just said. <laughs> Basically, I'm, I'm looking at it as just a redefining, you know, the definition or we're just adding some words to the ordinance. We're not changing the zoning lines. We're not changing anything that we're just changing words in the ordinance, which to me says, why not just send it to the ordinance and they decide if they want to draft some new language to the ordinance. Sorry, one Sorry. really yep. quick thing. I agree with everyone and I would like also to see, um, is there a possibility to make this a non-conforming use? I would like to support this shop to be able to do this. I agree with Penny, it's a great idea. I'm not sure I want to change the zoning rules for this whole district because we're, it potentially is opening up in the future a lot of small used car lots. So it, could it be a non-conforming use? I don't know the answer to that. Ordinance would have to tell me that. Uh, okay, thank you. And Kaylin? Did well, you just, it, it doesn't open up used car lots because it's tying it to a, a repair garage. So if you looked at how they defined the change, it's, it's just changing the definition of repair garage to include three plates. So we have only so many areas that you can have a repair garage in town. Right. So it's not that you can just have them pop up anywhere that this would be tied to that specific use Good point. as a repair garage with three plates. Uh, I just was thinking that it might still uh, be prudent to go to the planning board first because I remember vividly uh, the difficulties that um, arose with uh, Lee Wilson and Tara. And there was tremendous neighborhood resistance and so forth and so on. And it's possible that they're, they may want a site review just to, I, I don't know, but I'm thinking it probably should go to the planning board first, and then if that were the case, it would come back to us, and then we would likely send it on to ordinance. So, yeah. If we made through the chair yes. uh, again, uh, that was the recommended path by a staff as well, uh, because they're going to end up having a public hearing on it regardless, one way or the other. Uh, Generally, what's taken place when there has been amendments of this type, uh, they've gone to the planning board first and then to ordinance for refining afterwards if they find that there's a recommendation to go forward with that. So we would go to ordinance, oh, sorry, to planning board, come back to the council, who would then refer it to ordinance if there was, if there were, uh, you know, if the, if the sentiment was to go forward with it. So that's why the recommendation was to there because you, one way or the other, the planning board's going to get involved. So if you can get them and get the horse in front of the cart instead of the vice versa, then. That, that was the preferred method. All right, thank you. Um, would the town clerk read the, uh, the original motion? The uh, motion by Councilor Garvin and seconded by Councilor Caitlin Jordan to refer the proposed uh, changes by the Cape Elizabeth Service Center as proposed to the planning board. Okay, is there any more discussion? So just Council to be clear, the motion is to send it to the planning board, not the ordinance committee. That's correct. Right. Yep, so any more discussion on that? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Okay, great. Item number 37, Fort Williams Park, 2018 group use requests. Um, seeing no one here from Fort Williams Park Committee, I will ask the manager to just tee this up, please. I would be happy to, Madam Chair. Uh, this is uh, the beginning of the uh, beginning of the year and the four uh, the four large events that we know are our annual events are on here this evening to be uh, to be reviewed as a group request. We have the little leagues for their seasonal use as they will begin the season. Uh, the high school graduation is forecast, uh, or this will firm it up for June 10th, 2018. Uh, snow days be darned. Family fun day for June 16th on Saturday. Rain date of June 17th, and the beach to beacon will be. Uh, beginning uh, their setup on July 31st, finishing on August 4th with the race on that day. And then the final one that we do have is uh, Making Strides Cancer Walk, which is scheduled for Sunday, October 14th, 2018. Uh, and that is all, that last one would be contingent upon the payment of the half day area fee of $500. And these have been re reviewed by 
the park committee and they have brought them forward for the for the council to consider this evening all right thank you uh, is there a motion to uh, approve the Fort Williams Park 2018 group use request as presented? Councillor Lennon. So moved. Seconded. Councillor Randall. Any more discussion? I just have a question. Mm -hmm. How come there's no contingent upon payment for the Beach to Beacon if there's a contingent upon payment for the making strides? It's, uh, it's, it, it's part, uh, well, A, they have, what, 25 years worth of history. But they also, part of their contract with that is that they pay their amount on an annual basis, so. So it's. They, yeah, if they don't pay their fee, then the race doesn't happen, but. Right, but I just, I mean, we put it in there for one race, but not, so. The, the other one's new. Hopefully, uh, if they establish that, I think the recommendation will be gotcha. in the future to get them. Gotta get a track record established, Council Jordan. <laughs> any, any other questions? All those in favor? It's unanimous. Thank you. Item number 38, <laughs> pro review of, of proposed revisions to the Town Council's Code of Ethics. So, uh, you all have the uh, revisions that were uh, proposed and redlined by uh, the town's attorney, Tom Leahy. Um, sent those to us in January. We were going to discuss these at a workshop, and we got snowed out, I believe. So here we are. Um, and um, I've, I'll just go ahead and start it off by a asking for a motion, and then we can get into our discussion. Uh, is there a motion to accept the proposed changes to the uh, Town of Cape Elizabeth Code of Ethics for the Town Council as proposed by uh, Attorney Tom Leahy. Council Lennon. So moved. Is there a second? So we can to start our session. Uh, Jamie, Council Jamie Garvin. Okay. Any comments, concerns, uh, Valerie? Um, so I was looking over these, and I do think it would be helpful for us to have more workshop discussion because I think one of the things that came up was aligning these with the rules and I still looking at the revisions thought that they may not be in sync quite yet. Okay. Any other thoughts on that? Councilor Straw? Uh, I would agree with uh, Councilor Randall. Um, I thought there was universal uh, kind of consensus that the, although well intended, the code of ethics as it was currently drafted is too, oh, it's perhaps overly broad and unmanageable in a town of our size. So it seemed like the revisions that were made eliminated the examples, but it didn't cabin the scope to make it more reasonable. So I would also think that this might need to go through a workshop or additional revisions. Okay, any, any other thoughts? Uh, Councilor Lennon? This is just a general rule on all of our ordinances or whatever category this is. It seems to appear every time we look at an official document. There's just way too many capitalizations. It makes me completely crazy. So I don't know who I should talk to, but they, they need to do a search and replace. You don't capitalize something unless it's a proper noun, like town of Cape Elizabeth, but you don't capitalize town, counselor, town counselor, code of ethics. It's just grammatically incorrect, and I find it incredibly distracting. So who should I talk to? Well, what we can do is... Um, Sorry, but I'm we'll, a former English teacher, and I can't even read this without getting out a red pen. <laughs> we'll, we'll, make, we'll make those notes and then Thank uh, you. go forward. So we have a motion to accept. Um, it seems to be that uh, several counselors would like to, to take this to a workshop again. So my thought is the simplest thing is to vote up or down, and if we don't accept, then we go to a workshop. And I, I, I don't know if we can amend our original motion to do instead of that. You may be able to withdraw the motion ah. in a second, and then make if it's the motion seconded, it, too. it can be withdrawn. Okay. Uh, so, uh, Councillor Lennon, Jamie had no, was Councilor she? Lennon. Who, who was the original? I think I. So I am was Sarah. Seconded. Okay. Would you be willing to withdraw your motion? Yes. Okay. Thank you. And do I need to ask if, nope, we're good, okay. Well, um, then what we will do, um, uh, Jamie? I move that we refer this to a future workshop for additional discussion and review. All right, great, thank you. Is there a second for that? 
Council Lennon. Any more discussion? All those in favor? All right, so we'll, Matt and I will set that up to a future workshop. Okay, thank you. Uh, item number 39, 2018 Town Council Goals, draft. Uh, we began our, our, our review of goals at, on December 14th and last year, 2017, and uh, the draft is based on that meeting. Um, <clears throat> is there a motion to accept uh, the draft goals? So moved. All right, Councilor Randall and I'll second, second Councilor Penny Jordan. Any discussion? Councilor Gar. One very small thing, but in the second bullet of the first item, uh, I um, recommend an edit to strike the word new preceding town manager. <laughs> Councillor Lennon. Um, again, I made some very small grammatical edits like punctuation and a few replacements of words. I don't know how that fits in. If we accept this tonight, maybe it's too late, but I put them on hard copy and gave them to Matt just for clarification and correctness. No, no substantive change. I'm in the process of making those edits as, as we speak. Oh, you, did, you, did you say you had already sent them? To I just put it on a hard copy and handed it to them in our workshop. Ah, okay. I mean, I don't know if people are okay with that. It's just there were like misplaced commas and there's put maybe six edits or something. Okay. Yeah, if I may, Madam yeah. Chair. They, yeah, they are. It's, it's more housekeeping. It's housekeeping. Anything else. I'm, I'm currently in the process of changing. Uh, capital T and capital M and town uh, manager. Thank you. To lowercase T, lowercase <laughs> <laughs> Council Lennon. Uh, uh, Council Penny Jordan. Um, the only comment I have, well, Jamie took my first one with the new, but the second one was um, accountability. So we have these goals. Um, we have um, opportunity areas under underneath them. And um, I just want to throw out the, the concept of accountability because um, I think we all strongly believe in, um, in, in what we put in here. And I think some of us have more ownership for some than others. So do we want counselors to say, I want to be accountable for making this happen? So it's about accountability. Because we can't all make it all happen. You got to focus. Okay. So what you'd like to do, it sounds like, and, and we we have actually done this in the past. We've we've assigned counselors. We've assigned ourselves particular items, um, you know, ownership, if you will. Um, we certainly can do that. Um, I, and there could be some that are definitely shared, like yeah. when you look at uh, actively support the work of the comprehensive plan. But then when you look at um, explore opportunities to enhance communities' diversity, is there somebody that is more energized around that than others? Is there anything um, that is uh, standing out to any <coughs> right now that they would like to... Uh, to uh, work on, facilitate, be accountable for, own? Any of those concepts? It may be, a, we might need to actually send this to our, an additional workshop too. The only problem is, you know, these are goals for this year. I know, now <laughs> but can, can we year. accept well, we them accept and then them. assign them to, in a workshop? Yeah. That would be good. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, so so we will accept, uh, we'll assign these in a workshop then, but we accept the goals with the, uh, the corrections uh, noted and the grammatical errors submitted mm -hmm. or uh, corrected. And uh, so that, yeah, that works. So we're all set then. And we've, we've got our motion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, any other comments? Okay, so all those in favor of accepting the goals as presented with the edits that we've discussed, uh, all those in favor. So that's unanimous. Okay, it's now uh, near the end of our meeting and anyone present may raise any topic. However, I, other than two reporters, unless you would like to raise a topic, no. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right, all those in favor. Okay.
Okay, thank you. Thank you.